Hi everyone and welcome to another episode of the Ines and Pata podcast. I'm very honored today to have on my podcast, virtually of course, uh, until the, um, all the various lockdown levels have changed, but I've got Amit Gopal, who is the uh, operations manager and director at Gopal's Bags and Luggage, uh, a renowned name, um, a very famous brand and one that I think, uh, at least my experience of it, has a very trusted uh, heritage and, and reliability and, well, let me not say too much, you can hear it from the man himself. Amit, welcome to my podcast. Hi, Nason. Glad to be here. Awesome, awesome. So, uh, so Amit, I mean, like, without getting into the you know the whole story of it, you know, um, you're a business individual. Um, I, I know, apart from it being a family business, you, you you've got quite a strong business acumen, um, and I'm not sure if there are other things that you're involved in. But let's start at the beginning. Let's start at the very, very beginning. Amit's in primary school or high school or wherever it is. When does he know that, hey, maybe he wants to be in business? Mm. So, Nathan, uh, growing up in a family business, you must understand it's, it's part of your life growing up. Um, whilst you are in school, it's always there. When are you in, in university, it's always around you. Um, my parents, uh, we are in retail. So retail, the hours are long, you open every day. So it was a business that while I was in school, it was always in front of me because my folks would work every day, they would work on Saturdays, they would work on Sundays. Um, and in the holidays, during July break or December holidays, my sister and I would work in our stores. You know, I mean, I was young, I was in high school, I was in primary school, high school, I was just really filling in the gaps. Um, I think my dad wanted to expose it to me from then. Even if I wasn't really adding much value, just being there with the staff and my parents, um, slowly I was getting exposed more and more and more. So, you know, when I was in matric and came to start applying for degrees and what I wanted to study, um, my dad said, look, uh, you can do whatever you want to study, but just know there's always a business here waiting. Um, for you to get involved in. So, you know, it's retail. So the nice thing about retail is that it's fast, it's quick, it's fun. You, you're customer facing, you're meeting different people. And and I mean, we sell luggage, we sell handbags, people, our customers are always traveling. So you're always meeting people that are going on their first trip overseas, you know, you would meet um, an elderly um, couple who were traveling to India for the first time. Uh, and they're excited. You would meet uh, business people traveling for work overseas. You would meet um, people going for weddings. And, you know, you, you come across all these people. So, yeah, it, it was something that we were always exposed to from a young age. Um, working with stock, uh, labeling products, uh, serving customers. I mean, from, from school days, my December job was a gift wrapper. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think my dad, my dad liked that role for me because it meant I was out of the way of the salespeople. <laughs> I wasn't interfering with any, anyone's sales or anything, or, you know, or opening yeah. my mouth too much. Yeah, so, so now, just, just put it there, he's harmless. Like he's not going to do anything like that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it was a safe place for me to be there without tramping on any feet while yeah. also seeing what's happening in the store. So, I mean, there's a misnomer or at least a misunderstanding when it comes to like family businesses is that everyone thinks that if you're in a family business and you grew up there, that you've got it easy when it's the, like you're saying, it's the opposite. It's weekends, it's after hours. You, you're a part of it from the start. Yeah, it, it, was a, it was a very long pull to swallow. It's not something that you can just say yes and everything works in your favor because, you know, you are in a position to call the shots. Uh, you know, I've been working with my folks uh, full time for the last 10 years. But then if I count the years where I was helping on the weekends and, you know, it's longer. But I mean, it's not your business still, right? It, in my case, it was started by, by them. It's theirs. I work with them. So you really have to earn the respect of your staff you really have to earn the respect of your parents it's it's a continuous battle where they have the best intentions in heart at heart for you but you really got to carry this responsibility if you want to take it and 
you know, learn from them and become a part of something bigger. And, and and was there ever? I mean, I mean, just looking back now. I mean, you know, you've always been involved in the business, and and, and I guess your dad wanted you to, to to learn the nuts and bolts of how retail works on a day to day basis. Did you ever have that moment where you were like, maybe this isn't what I want to do, or I'm going to try for a few years and maybe I'm going in a different direction? Um, and how did that lead you to 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 where you are now? Yeah, it it did cross my mind couple times especially because you know i i joined my folks when i was what 24 25 somewhere around there and mm-hmm. and fortunately you know growing up in durban a lot of my friends were also starting their own businesses so yeah. the nice thing is that whilst i had a a group of friends who were working for banks and engineering companies and so forth and they were moving out of durban I did have a group of friends who were actually here starting their own things. Uh, so it's almost like I was surrounded by people who were working long hours, volatile environments, things were breaking down, they were driving at night to fix things, you know, they weren't in this uh, nine to five comfort zone. So I, yeah. I did, there were moments I did think that, you know what, maybe this is not for me. And, um, you know, a while back I finished my MBA and I thought, oh, you know, Maybe, you know, the way things are going with retail, it was becoming um, very, I mean, it, it was, you know, just before COVID. And yeah. I think about it because I felt, well, you know, I've got this qualification and I've got so many years. But then, you know, when you meet and sit and you actually look at it, what you have, because you're so in it, you don't really see the potential and the opportunity from the outside because you are so yeah. subjectively subjectively invested yeah. inside. Yeah, you're too um, close to your product, yeah. You're too close to your product. And I mean, I have spoken to a lot of friends who have left their family businesses and for multiple reasons, you know, from the outside, it's very easy to say, oh, okay, the parents and them don't get along. Or, but there's so many variables in any family. Yeah. And you take Absolutely. that inside a business setting um and some have had regrets some have looked back but so it, it really depends on what you want and how your parents are because both sides have to meet and have to work together and that's where the friction lies absolutely and 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 in terms of the transitional thing i mean so 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 how long has your dad been running the business oh so my Mom and dad opened their first store in 1974. So it was actually opened oh, wow. by my granny. My oh, granny. Dude, so we, we weren't even alive then, were we? That's no, even... no, we weren't. But, <laughs> but my, my granny and my dad worked together in a shoe store. And then when my mom and then got married, then they worked together in the same shoe store. So they've been at it for over 40 plus years. Okay, and then you come in with your MBA knowledge and, and your modern thinking and etc. How did how did that fit? I mean, how, I'm, I'm sure I'm sure it's not an easy because okay, I mean, if I ran a business for forty years, if I was doing really well with it, and if my son came to me with his big ideas, I would be like, slow down. <laughs> like, how, 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 how was that conversation? <laughs> So like so when when I joined my when I joined them for the first time so what happens I did law right yeah. so I I studied law um, I worked as an attorney for about six months and then I knew okay right um, I wasn't going to stay in this field let me join my business because it was something I always wanted to do at the end and I thought okay well at that time um, I was 23 24 odd and. A lot of my friends are moving out of Durban and they're working, you know, outside mm-hmm. Joba, Cape Town, that sort of thing. I thought, okay, yeah. well, do I want to do that and then come back to Durban and join our business? But by then I would be, you know, maybe five or six years there. I'd be 30 plus and come back. And I knew the first five or so years, whenever I joined, was always going to be harder, if not longer, you know? Yeah. Um, so I said, why am I doing this? Let me join my folks now at a younger age. Yeah. And let me not waste time. So I had a plan in mind. And it, I think in hindsight, it worked well in favor. And the first year or so, um, so I did law. I, I went, I studied here at UKZN. I, I went to do um, a master's at UCT. 
but mm -hmm. I think I party too hard, and I, I after the first semester I have to come back. <laughs> So, so that, you know, that, you know what I learned? That's actually part of the learning. That's actually a model. Yeah, that is part of the learning. That is part of the learning. <laughs> so, so, like, you got to party hard, feel it all, experience it all, and be like, oh, okay, I've, I've gone through the rights of passage now. Uh, you know, I the funny thing, like, I had the worst combination of roommates. I was doing a postgrad <laughs> in my class. Yeah. I I had a I had a cousin of mine who was in third year. So by then he was pretty settled in Cape Town, and you know he. He was chilled, and then I had a first year who just moved in, who was like yeah. hormones raging, you know, like <laughs> yeah, ready to go out. Yeah, so three of us shared a flat, and and I think I I like I had qualities that were similar to both people because I was here for the first time, but I also yeah. knew I had this massive thesis and everything to write. Yeah. So anyway, long story short, I partied too much, and then I came back to Durban after the first semester. And did my did my um, I did my articles, and I finished. Mm -hmm. uh, I became an attorney, right? So then um, the following year, I worked as an attorney for a bit, and then I joined our business. So then I said, okay, well, let me just follow my dad around for the first year or two because I knew I knew the staff by then. I knew everyone in our business because I had worked there, you know, on weekends and holidays. Everyone knew me, but yeah. I, I I knew I really didn't have the respect of everyone. Mainly because I was the boss's son, right? Yeah, Coming in, yeah. and, and, and and that's a big hurdle to overcome because you've almost got to prove your metal and prove that you you're worthy of making those decisions and not just by nepotism. And that's and that's harder than people think. You know, you can't just throw your weight around in that sense. Yeah, it's it's very hard because yeah, you know, I had a team of people and everyone's obviously older than me and, and they've been working there for, you know, 10 years and more. A lot of our staff have been with us for many years and they knew a lot, way more than me. And um, so the first year or so, I really just followed my dad around um, and, you know, store to store because we've got, at the time, we had four or five stores in Durban. So I was literally his tail and I watched him. Um, and I was learning because, you know, you learn a lot just by being there. And yeah. I think he had this plan in mind. You know, at the time, I'm, I didn't have my own car. So we used to drive together to work, drive back home every day. Yeah. Um, I knew I wasn't in a position to make any big decisions or anything. And I was fine with that. I wasn't eager to take charge. I knew at the time, you know, my dad's always worked very long, you know, very hard. So I knew this is something that's very personal and precious, you know, for him as well. So yeah. me not just, you know, step all over it. Um, so I think those first two years of me just watching and, and learning was really important because, you know, you get a lot of people who join their business, like you mentioned, and all of a sudden they get this title. They, they know they are in a strong position of authority and they just start pushing things aside and making all the decisions yeah. and it gets to their head. So, yeah, without consideration. Yeah, without consideration. So, I mean, tell me, where is the business now? So, the current state of Gopal, I know you sell online quite a lot. Uh, I know Cards and Life fetch a lot of our luggage from you guys. I remember our last Bali trip was, uh, your selection is really incredible. I mean, and you guys are everywhere. Um, so, w what's the current state of the business and where do you see it going? So, at the moment, we've got four stores in Durban. Mm -hmm. Okay. We... We've got it in Pavilion, Gateway, um, Galleria Mall, and we just closed our town store now, like three weeks ago. But in, in March, we opened in Maritzburg at, at the Liberty Midlands Mall. And yeah. um, that space, the Maritzburg store is interesting because it's our first store that's outside of Durban, but still close to travel. So it's not, it's almost like a taste of can we open more stores? further yeah, from sure. and do we have the confidence the skills the systems and processes in place to run a retail store yeah um, to scale though, yeah to scale right and the thing about our business and a lot of other retail industries are similar is that it's very personal it's very hands-on so yeah. you know there's a relationship formed between our customers and our staff and you know yeah. they come into the store if this person served them, they would buy a suitcase and then, you know, the following month, they'll come back to the store, ask for that same person. That and now person. they want to buy yeah. a handbag for their wife or, or a gift yeah. for someone. 
So it's hard to replicate that, uh, cut and paste it. So we've got five stores now. Um, you know, we are still t- being directly impacted with COVID, right? Because a yeah. big chunk of our business yeah. is luggage. Yeah. So, you know, no one is traveling at the moment. It's definitely not what it used to be. So, you know, for now, we've just holding for what we have and we are focusing on our online store. It's, it's, you know, it has a lot of potential. And, uh, you know, in Durban, because Durban is small, um, people have more time, traffic is an issue. People don't really mind jumping into their car and driving to the mall. It doesn't concern them that, you know, oh, it's too far or, or like, you know. So a lot of people use our online store in Durban as well, just as sort of like an extension of the store and then go to the store to actually make the purchase and speak to someone. Yeah. Yeah. And in fact, I think, I think it's a general, well, I wouldn't say general, but it is a South African e-commerce thing to do a fair amount of prospecting online and then go in and say, okay, I just want to see it for myself uh, kind of thing. So yeah. And, and, and I mean, in terms of, in terms of e-commerce, do you, do you see it as the future of GoPulse or will it be another channel that will almost be like, a, like you said, an online store that's part of your, your set of stores? Or do you see it playing a very prominent role in maybe the next 10 years? I, I do see it definitely growing. Um, you know, uh, the bulk of our customers that actually buy on our online store are from small towns outside of Durban, Western Cape, George, yeah. and Popo, right? So now all of a sudden we are servicing customers that never would have come across our business. Yeah. Right? Uh, so it's so new markets. Yeah. yeah, it's new markets. Um, the thing is, uh, shopping centers are here to stay. In South Africa, I'm talking about. You know, yeah, we, and I, 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 I agree with you. Yeah, I don't think retail dies. Retail never no, dies. No, it doesn't. And, you know, I've had this debate with so many big retailers in uh, management and so many, and my dad and so many other people that, you know, South Africa is a bit unique to what's happening in the States pre-COVID, right? Where sh- malls are closing, I understand that. If people are shopping online, I understand that. But in South Africa, there is a big middle class. And they are slowly now in that affordability bracket where if they used to shop at that small local mall, you know, many, many years ago, they can now travel a bit further and shop at this gateway or pavilion or these malls that they wouldn't have shopped at before. And the, the satisfaction you gain from walking into a shop, speaking to someone, walking out with this gift in your hand and this nice package or gift bag is not the same as buying it online, right? Um, yeah. So it's a big experience. Yes, it's the product may be the same, but the value and the sort of the entertainment factor that you get is different. Um, yeah, and, and, and it's like that's a one-on-one one experience that can't be replicated online. Yeah, I mean, no one says, hey, guys, let's go online and buy some stuff. Like, no one says that. <laughs> but they do say, hey, come with me shopping. Let's go. I need some jeans. Let's go look around. And then and obviously in the process, you end up buying many things. So you end up eating here and there. So it is a time passer and it's, it's enjoyable. And it's experiential. And I think a lot of people, I mean, context of the current climate, people want to get out and do things and just enjoy the, the simplicity of that. Um, I mean, okay, so this, this is a question I ask all my podcast guests, and hopefully you can give me your unique answer on it. And again, thank you for sharing your story, but what is the one thing, right, in business that you believe or have not that most people will disagree with you? One thing that I believe that most people... I, I, it, it, it's a tough one. It's a tough one. It's like, it's like, it's like, a, is, is there a common piece of knowledge that you've learned that isn't true? Hmm. Okay, so this is this could be quite controversial, but you know, working with my parents, I think there's a lot of qualities and values that the old school has that we yeah, choose to yeah. ignore. Yeah. You know, under this uh, facade of modern is the way, and yep, exactly. uh, if it's quicker, faster, cheaper, and can be automated, that is the way to go. Yeah. Uh, you know, and I, I do agree. Those uh, characteristics and qualities are important. But, you know, with me, being with my folks for so many years, there's a lot of exp- intuition almost that you gain from experience and you understand yes. why certain decisions or things are made. And it, it, and that it only might- comes with tenure. It only comes with experience. 
it only comes experience and it might not be the way that, that it might not work in a hairdresser business or a mm-hmm. coffee shop business right but for your business it works so why yeah. change it? you know exactly and it's and it's not something you can quantify it's not something you can put a measure or a kpi to and it's not something that arguably you can digitize Yeah, exactly. And and the thing is if you if it's your own business and it works for you and you've geared your life and other decisions and other parts of your business um to almost work uh, in uh, with these with this process or whatever the thing is, right? It works for you. So, you know, why tinker with it? 100%. So, I mean, you know, thank it, you so much for for just sharing the the Gopal story, sharing your story. And uh, I think that uh, the uh, the answer you just gave is actually a, a real gem of advice because I think it's so rare with you know all these business clichés and the ongoing Instagram posts you see everywhere but I think to 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 to, to get an authentic answer about you know everybody believes x y and z but sometimes there's pieces of knowledge that are that are neglected and okay so on a final note your advice to anyone wanting to start a business today what would you say to them Mm. Oh, you know, okay, so this is so much a part from no don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> no, look, I, I would say go for it. If you are in that position that it's always on your mind, start it. Like a lot of people I know they want to research everything to the T before starting. What happens is that it never begins. Just start it and tweak, 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 tweak along the way and what you start it might not be where you end up a year from now, two years from now. but it's something and it's working yeah. absolutely perfect perfect i mean thank you so much for your time i know it took a long time for us to get to this one but i think uh, we've done a still sterling job and thanks for being such a great guest and so forth coming with with your info uh people can find you at gopalsluggage.co.za yeah it's uh, www.gopals.co.za okay and all over social i've seen you all over social so yeah yeah you got all the platforms Perfect. Thanks for your time, sir. Take care. Okay. Thanks, man. Take it easy. Yes, bye. bye.